Now, what did Homo erectus look like? What did they do? How did they survive the harsh climates? Lots of questions, eh? But why don't we give it a try? Let's take a look at the ancient lives of Homo erectus. This was the ancient human ancestor that paved the way for our evolution. From their remarkable adaptation to the African savanna to their astonishing journey out of Africa and into the rest of the world, there is a lot to say, and let's go through them one by one. At least three to four million years ago, the guys created the most successful tool ever, invented by any hominid, and may have been the first to live in bands of hunter and gatherers, and use fire to cook food. That's one hell of an achievement. In Indonesia in 1891, a Dutch surgeon named Eugene Dubius discovered the first Homo erectus specimen. Dubius gave the species the name Pithecanthropus erectus, or erect ape man in 1894. Pithecanthropus, later known as Homo erectus, was at that time the earliest and smallest brained of any early human species known to science. No early human fossils had even been found in Africa. Early African Homo erectus fossils, also known as Homo ergaster, are the earliest known examples of early humans with proportions similar to modern humans, including relatively long, lengthened legs and short arms compared to the size of the torso. These characteristics, including the capacity to walk and possibly sprint for great distances, are considered adaptations to a life lived on the ground, indicating the loss of earlier tree climbing capabilities. At least three to four million years ago, upright or standing humans evolved into bipeds, and they left Africa for the first time around 1.8 million years ago. Biologists refer to Homo erectus as a corono species, or a species that evolves over time. The older phase of these species, which was known as the Homo ergaster, lived primarily in Africa, whereas the later Homo erectus lived primarily in Eurasia, with a brain that was, on average, between 780 and 1225 CC, significantly larger than Homo habilis, who was the first member of the genus Homo. Homo erectus stood up straight. When looking into the present state, the current human brain is 1500 CC in size. The adult Homo erectus was about five feet tall and had a long, flat head, massive, huge bones, and a prominent nose. Now, if you take a clear look, we can say he was kind of more handsome than others. As we said before, they were the first early humans to leave Africa and colonize the old world. With long legs and long Achilles tendons, their body was well suited for running. Homo erectus appeared to have been entirely terrestrial, in contrast to previous hominids that spent a lot of time in trees and on the ground. They traveled great distances over the shores of Africa and Eurasia. Sea levels had fallen due to the ice age, which may have made it simpler for groups to find food as they migrated along the coast. You see, Homo erectus humans needed a lot of energy to function regularly due to their towering bodies and big minds. Eating meat and other proteins that could be broken down quickly allowed for quicker absorption of nutrients, which led to the release of more energy. Also, there's a suggestion that Homo erectus may have relied heavily on honey and underground tubers as a source of nourishment. Also, there would have been an abundance of shellfish and other aquatic food sources rich in omega-3, iron, and other nutrients important for brain development. When looking over to the other side, in the east, Homo erectus entered China, while in the west, it reached northern Europe. A variation of the MC1R gene, which is known to be significant for darker skin tone, was discovered to have existed 1.2 million years ago in certain early research. This adaption implies that our ancestors were well on their way to becoming bald at this point. We still had hair on our heads because it protected the brain from the sun and prevented overheating. Our tendency to sweat, which is a great technique to control body temperature, is linked to the loss of body hair. This was crucial because despite the fact that standing upright reduced the amount of direct sunlight our bodies were exposed to, running long distances was necessary for us to hunt huge game animals. Also, losing our body hair also allowed us to sweat less, which allowed us to eat a diet high in proteins, which in turn helped fuel our developing brains and prepare us for increasingly complicated tasks, like symbolic reasoning and language. Since Homo erectus was the first species to live in a group that were structured as hunter-gatherers, they were likely able to communicate and coordinate their hunting behavior. They provided care for their injured family members and, as early as 1.7 million years ago, constructed the bifacial hand axe, the most successful instrument ever made by a hominid. The earliest Homo erectus remains were discovered in the fossil record about 1.9 million years ago, while the first significant advancement in stone tool technology was discovered in the archaeological record about 1.76 million years ago. 
It was referred to as the Ashuelin stone tool industry and produced enormous cutting implements like cleavers and hand axes. One thing we can confirm is that about 900,000 years ago, Erectus utilized large Ashuelian hand axes and scrapers to butcher meat. Now, where does this fact come from? Well, the evidence comes from the Olegeslian Basin in the Rift Valley and spans 1.2 million years. 100,000 years later, the habitat grew arider and grassland as the climate started to alternate more frequently between wet and dry conditions. Smaller Basset Acheulean tools that could be transported over large distances were developed as a result of the potential for greater freedom of movement, before a gap created by ancient erosion swept away evidence until roughly 320,000 years ago. The latest hand axe at the site dated to 499,000 years ago. The Acheulean tools vanished by this period and it was common to find instruments with finer blades and tips that would have been crafted onto spears. Familiar with obsidian? Well, this black volcanic rock was used to make several of the tools and may have been transported and processed at the site from sources up to 100 kilometers away. And these weapons are unbelievably sharp. By applying pressure to the stone, Erectus purposefully molded the raw flint shards that would become his Acheulean tools. Before they began, these toolmakers had to have a general notion of the shape they saw. A type of planning, education, and management that most certainly helped our brains grow by a factor of two. Yep, you could say this hobby made us smart. Numerous studies revealed that the more a person practiced sharpening a flint, the more brain matter accumulated in the relevant region, suggesting direct proof that toolmaking contributed to the development of the modern human brain. It appears, however, that this did not mean that Erectus spoke a language. It's seen that the brain created these tools without verbal instruction by combining working memory and motor control. Something more like an instinct, you could say. Anyway, Homo erectus may have done much better during times of climate change if they relied more on a wider variety of tools. But do sad, many of them didn't. Homo erectus area fossils contain the earliest signs of campfires. Campfires were undoubtedly utilized for social interaction, as well as warmth and to deter large predators. There's evidence that it was used for cooking and possibly for sharing food. As we said in the beginning, Homo erectus lived between 1.8 million and 70,000 years ago. They're considered to be one of the first human species to leave Africa and spread to other parts of the world. Now, did they leave? The exact reason for their dispersal is not fully understood, but several theories have been proposed. One theory suggests that environmental changes and the need for new resources drove Homo erectus to explore new territories. As their habitats changed, they had to adapt and find new sources of food and water. This led them to move out of Africa and to other parts of the world. Another theory suggests that Homo erectus may have been driven by competition for resources with other early human species. As their population grew, they may have needed to expand their territories to find new resources. It's also possible that Homo erectus was simply following animal migration patterns, as they relied heavily on hunting for survival. Regardless of the exact reason, Homo erectus was able to successfully spread across the globe and establish populations in Asia, Europe, and even as far as Indonesia. Their ability to adapt and survive in new environments helped lay the foundation of the later evolution and expansion of the human species. Alright, now coming to an end of today's episode, there you have it. The journey of Homo erectus, from its humble beginnings in Africa to its far-reaching impact on human evolution. Their ability to adapt and survive in a changing world has left a lasting legacy that continues to captivate and inspire us. Anyway, we don't stop here. We'll continue to unravel the mysteries of our ancient past. Who knows what other exciting discoveries we may uncover about the remarkable species that were here before us. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring the wonders of the past.